from his job since August after adopting a child. Paternity leave, they call it. Um, Fox News actually calls it the same thing and offers it to new dads. He went on to say something about breastfeeding, which I would say to Tucker Carlson, don't knock it till you try it. But w what are these attacks about? Well, uh, look, in, in his case, I guess he just doesn't understand the concept of bottle feeding, let alone the concept of, of paternity leave. Uh, but what's really strange is that, uh, you know, um, this is from a side of the aisle that used to claim the mantle of being pro-family. Uh, what we have right now is an administration that's actually pro-family. And uh, I'm blessed to be able to experience that, you know, as an employee, uh, being able to have the, the flexibility uh, to take care of our newborn uh, children, which is, uh, by the way, work. It's joyful work. It's, it's wonderful work, but it's, it's definitely work. And we as a society, I think, are starting to do a better job of recognizing that parenting is work, that caregiving is work, and supporting it as such, which is, of course, why the president uh, has proposed paid family leave for all Americans, something most Americans already believe that we ought to do and something that most highly developed countries pretty much take for granted. Well, I, I guess I want to push you on where you think this is coming from, because it's it's misogynistic, I guess, to think that dads shouldn't also be home. It feels homophobic to suggest that you were trying to figure out breastfeeding. I mean, it, it feels dirtier than that. How does this attack land for you and Chastin? I mean, look, this attack is coming from a guy who has yet to explain his apparent approval for the assassination of Harvey Milk. Uh, so, you know, obviously we, we know that uh, there's some dark places where some of these attitudes come from. But uh, I also know that that doesn't speak for uh, the country. I don't think that even speaks for uh, most people uh, on, on the other side of the aisle from the party that I belong to. This is largely a consensus issue, not just the support for families like mine to have a, a right to marry and, and right to uh, uh, be treated equally, uh, but also that families in general, moms and dads, uh, ought to be able to support their children, including with paid family leave. This is Pete Buttigieg in the aftermath of Tucker Carlson coming on air on Fox News' most watched show and tossing around some casual homophobia. But still, the White House does not seem concerned. Pete Buttigieg has been on leave from his job since August after adopting a child. Paternity leave, they call it, trying to figure out how to breastfeed. No word on how that went. But now he's back in office as the transportation secretary, and he's deeply amused, he says, to see that dozens of container ships can't get into this country. Because just when you think there's a floor, Tucker's there to prove you wrong. Now, what's most ironic about this is that Republicans are the ones who fashion themselves the party of family values. And yet, God forbid, a family tries to take time off to be with a child, and suddenly the right has nothing but outward contempt for those people. Of course, that's if you buy into the idea that the right was ever actually pro-family values. Because remember, the leader of that party is still Donald Trump, who's paid more money in hush money payments to escorts and porn stars for affairs than many people will see in their lifetimes. Stormy Daniels said that she had sexual relationships with Donald Trump in 2006, while Melania was at home pregnant with their son Barron. And that's the guy that the entire so-called party of family values has lined up behind, which should pretty much put everything into perspective. Now, obviously, the reason that Tucker isn't okay with family values in this instance is because Pete Buttigieg is gay, and so it doesn't fit into his concept of a family. And if you don't fall into the narrow parameters of what Tucker thinks you should be in this country, he'll attack you. Just like he's been on a relentless spree as of late attacking any non-white immigrant who deigns to come into this country. And so instead, he'll go on national television and peddle an outright white supremacist conspiracy theory called the Great Replacement Theory. I'm laughing because this is one of about 10 stories that I know you've covered um, where the government shows preference to people who have shown absolute contempt for our customs, our laws, mm. our system itself, and they're being treated better than American citizens. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting mm. ballots, with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. But they become hysterical because that's, that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it. That's mm. true. Mm. If, if, look, mm. if this was happening in your house, if you were in sixth grade, for example, and without telling you, your, kid, your parents adopted a bunch of new siblings and gave them brand new bikes and let them stay mm. up later and help them with their homework and gave them twice the allowance that they gave you, you would say to your siblings, you know, I think we're being replaced by, by kids that our parents love more. 
And it would be kind of hard to argue against you because look at the evidence. So right. this matters on a bunch of different levels, but on the most basic level, it's a voting rights question. In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you change the population, you dilute the political power of the people who live there. So every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. So apparently, family values are great, but only if your family looks like Tucker's. There's also the fact that the Build Back Better Act affords families exactly this. Paid leave is part of the package, affording all workers up to 12 weeks of paid family and medical leave, a program that a staggering 80% of Americans support. It also offers childcare and elder care, with costs capped for middle income families at 7% or less of their annual income, another monumentally popular program. And yet because Tucker Carlson is a partisan hack, he's just being a dutiful little soldier here and opposing those things because they're elements of a democratic agenda. Forget the fact that they're popular. Forget that 8 in 10 Americans, including majorities on both sides of the aisle, support them because it's not about that. Democrats could propose curing cancer and Tucker would hold 74 straight segments demanding that cancer has rights too. This is about hurting Joe Biden, even if that means hurting the American people more. The simple fact is this, it's clear that Tucker Carlson and many Many people like him on the right have become leagues more emboldened since Trump had taken office. And until Republicans suffer enough of a repudiation at the ballot box, this behavior will continue. If Republicans make gains, they will look at their messaging, like the outright homophobia and xenophobia that Tucker Carlson spews on a nightly basis, and feel validated. The only way to stop this is to win. To win the House, the Senate, state legislatures, and in 2024, the White House. So that Tucker's contemporaries can then point to him and say, you are pushing people away. You are shrinking our party. You are appealing only to a dwindling base and alienating the vast majority of new voters, of young voters, of diverse voters. But that'll only happen if Republicans lose. So our job is to show up, not just for voting rights, not just for women's reproductive rights, not just for climate change, not just for a living wage, not just for workers' rights, but because the only thing capable of shutting Tucker Carlson up is some proof that his vile messaging isn't working. And the only ones with the power to deliver that proof is us. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.